just finally, uh, there is also another aspect of union policy where there is a deadline uh, this week, uh, Wednesday, I believe, where the Prime Minister must make a decision as to whether or not to strike down a piece of legislation passed by the Scottish Parliament that has not yet received royal assent, their gender reforms. Olivia, it looks pretty likely the Prime Minister is going to enact Section 35 of the Scotland Act for the first time in the history of this country. It does look like he's going to do that, and it would be unprecedented. Um, it, it's an interesting issue because there is talk in, in Westminster and in Holyrood now that it's possible that Nicola Sturgeon brought forward this hugely controversial legislation, which was rushed through Holyrood uh, at the end of last year. I mean, sittings until two o'clock in the morning to get this bill over the line. There is talk that she might have, part of her motivation for bringing it in could have been uh, to, to pick a constitutional row with, with the Westminster government because she believes that uh, the best thing to do is, is create a sort of roadblock uh, between, between England and Scotland. And it does put Rishi Sunak in a very difficult p position, this bill, because if you have a different definition, say, of what the word woman is in Scotland and in England, you could come into problems where, whereby someone who uh, is a, a male-bodied person who's uh, awaiting trial for sexual offences could gain a gender recognition certificate in Scotland Scotland and end up being sent to a women's prison in England. I mean, it's unlikely, but hypothetically, well, within, that could happen. Within Scotland, under the terms of this bill, it would still be a matter of individual assessment for uh, people going to prisons or otherwise. Would, is, it, is it the concern of the government that it's just more likely that with a GRC that that would change the terms of assessment? So under the gender recognition reform bill, it essentially takes away all checks and balances to people who want to change their gender. So instead of needing a, a medical diagnosis of gender dysphoria, all, all one would have to do is live in an acquired gender for three months or six months if you're between 16 and 18. Whereas so, currently that's two years. Exactly. Um, and there has to be a, a, some sort of professional intervention as well. And the gender re recognition reform bill would remove all that. Mm. So it, it does put Rishi Sunak in a difficult position because of the ramifications it would have in England. And his argument is that it might be incompatible with the UK-wide uh, 2004 Equalities Act. So that's what he'll be arguing. Yeah. And if he does go ahead with it, we know that it's going to pose a huge constitutional problem. And we already have both Nicola Sturgeon and Stephen Flynn, the SNP man in Westminster, saying that whatever you think about the gender issue, this is now a matter of democracy. And if Westminster chooses to stand in the way of a bill that has been passed by a majority in Holyrood, then that would essentially count as Westminster roadblocking Scotland's democracy. So and this is going to be a big issue about what, what's really quite a niche subject. And absolutely fascinatingly, the Labour Party backed this reform in Scotland. It, it is proposing this reform in Wales. And yet in England, Sir Keir Starmer is sort of sitting on the fence as to whether or not to block it. Yeah, he was on the TV yesterday saying that, you know, there are large parts, he thinks, of the system in England that doesn't work, but on the whole he doesn't agree with the legislation introduced in Scotland because, not least of all, it, it is open to 16-year-olds who he, mm. he thinks is, is too young. But yeah, I mean, there is a bit of a, more than a bit of a row within the Labour Party, mm. uh, you know, about... Keir Starmer is the leader of the Labour Party across at the UK, and yet, you know, you've got Scottish Labour in a very different position, and as you say, Welsh Labour as well. From the government's point of view, they say, and they would argue, this is not about this issue to a large degree. It is not as in terms of politics. It is about the legality of all of this, i.e. with the Equalities Act in England. They have to act. Dominic Grieve was on the radio this morning, of course, the former Conservative Attorney General, saying that actually, in many ways, yes, this has been traded as a constitutional issue, but ultimately, it is a legal act that the government have to take because it would cut across those equality laws. However, of course, the ramifications politically are enormous. There is no doubt about that. Though it does look to try and assuage people a little bit that the government may bring forward the conversion therapy legislation that mm. they've been talking about for the last five years and that that could include people... Um, in the transgender so it's, it's almost well. a bit of a, a tit for tat there. Yes, we're going to block this, but we might do a liberalisation here, that, and, and so it's sort of. That. But, but yeah, both of course, sides. I mean, but you know, there is no doubt the SNP will exploit this. Mm. It is going to cause a hell of a row, and will it, frankly, yeah. stoke Scottish nationalism? It's entirely possible it will.